Howdy, boys! How you all doing, guys? Welcome. How how do you, how are you? How are you guys? Guys, how you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. It's me, your boy Bob, and it's also Will's microphone. Oh, do you not see me? <laughs> I see you. It's just mostly the Hi. microphone. Sorry, I'm just picking stickers off of my shoe me? because that's what happens when you live with a toddler. You got you have you get you, stickers you, all over. She's the on the sticker phase. Oh yeah, she's, she's big time into into stickers. Big time There's a sticker. Batman sticker. There's a Batman sticker still in my kitchen that I've oh. tried to scrape off and I just can't get all of it. Oh, so no. there's just forever a piece of Batman's cape on my kitchen floor. You mean we get to do arts and crafts? I've never done arts and crafts. How come you never told me about the arts and crafts? Well, next time, next time you're with her, just whip out a your doodle pad and just doodle for her. She she loves that drawing shit. I'll whip out the doodle pad. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I made a latte right before this. Here you go, everybody. Take a look at my latte. This is my hand. How you doing? Oh, my beautiful Wolf Den Ooh. desk mat. I forgot. You can get over at WolfDenApparel.com. Yo, wow. yo, plug, plug, plug. Look at this. Uh, beautiful. Look at this. I'm getting. Listen, the latte art's kicking up. All right. This is pretty damn good if you ask me. That's a little heart, little butt. It's a uh, it's a heart or a butt, depending on well, how you want it. All I got is I got my chai tea back in my giant ass R two D two comics mug because it's winter again. Very nice. And it's cold. Yeah. Uh, we got some notifications right off the bat. We got Therna damn. with five months. We got Travel with five hundo bits. Hey, Wolf boys, Will, how do you feel about the American classic and all around underrated film series Tremors? Damn it, we're doing this off the bat. <laughs> I have to give you context. I played I, Zelda yesterday, right? And there is uh, th there's a, a a dungeon like it's like this last dungeon I think it's a uh, uh, the spirit yeah. temple, and it's in the sand. And when you go up to it, there's legit graboids, and then also <laughs> flying graboids, like legit. Oh, wow. That's just what they are. So uh, wow. I was like, "This is from Tremors," and then I played Tremors, and then someone was like, wow, that's, you know too much about Tremors. And I said, no, I don't. If you want to know too much about Tremors, you ask Will about Tremors. Yes. Uh, Tremors is great. Uh, I, I love Tremors, except the fourth one. Uh, Tremors 1 and 2, legit classics. Uh, I believe it's the sixth one, A Cold Time in Hell. <laughs> I Let me tell you something about six. that movie because that, there's some interesting. Please tell me all about. about so, Tremor Six: The Cold Day in Hell uh, takes place. I forget if it's the Arctic or the Antarctic, but it takes place in a region with a lot of snow. Okay. But they filmed it in South Africa, a country that does not have much snow. Why so what they, they did they was. <laughs> what they did was, they just shot the movie outside, and any scene that takes place outside is tinted blue oh no to try and pass it off as snow and once you know that watching it it makes it so much better i mean i'm looking at pictures now and it just looks like it's it doesn't look like snow at all it just looks like yeah. they're outside in the desert <laughs> but it, it look that's what you know the fact that they had to tint it blue to try and make it look like snow because they didn't have a budget for it it, it, it's, it it's looks like beautiful. it looks like all the art for it is snow but then the actual footage is just is just in the desert yeah that's so stupid they could have just made it they didn't have to make it antarctic then <laughs> well they but gotta it, change it up you're, you're six movies deep and you got a good title of a cold day in hell and they go with the b character the whole way through <laughs> the hey man hey man who else is going to come back to that series? Kevin Bacon's <laughs> off doing Kevin Bacon things. Fred Ward is really old. So mm -hmm. why not? All right. Well, you asked for that. Yeah. Uh, Latin Red with a thousand bits. What's going on, Wolf Bros? Finally able to catch a stream after essentially watching your entire podcast archive on YouTube. Hell yeah. Just wanted yeah. to say thanks for what making work feel bearable by making it feel like I'm just having a convo with my pals. Keep up the incredible worker. Thank you, Latin Red, for hanging out and supporting and all that. All you got to do is hang out. You know, we don't need you yeah. to, to go too crazy, but I appreciate it anyway. Um. 
So uh, there's a lot of things to talk about today, guys. Uh, yes. We have to talk about. Uh, we have to talk about. Oh, I see why you put Paper Mario up there. It makes sense now. I. Okay, never mind. We have to talk okay. about. Uh, Sony is planning a Game Pass competitor. They're gonna have our own mm-hmm. sort of streaming service. We have to talk about uh, Titanfall. Believe it or not, uh, we have to talk about Scuff made a PlayStation Five controller. Mm-hmm. We have to talk about. Uh, Rockstar delaying the physical copy of Grand Theft Auto. Who would have saw that coming? Wonder wow. why. Oh, Panda Global. Well, I don't think we oh. talked about that controller at all. That's going to the top. I think we we got to talk about that. Yeah. Well, I think we talked about they're doing something when they announced their partnership with Nintendo initially, and now we know what they're doing. Uh, this isn't part of the partnership. It's not. No, I think we did talk about this. We said they're doing a partnership with Nintendo, and also they have a controller coming out. Okay. Uh, which has not, and I was curious because I was like, they they probably don't have a license for that. We'll talk right. about that. Um, but before we do all of that, it's the we beginning have a lot of the of month. Admin. Yeah. Yes. Well, do you want to do the poll or do you want to? Oh, do... we gotta do the poll. We gotta do the poll. Let's it's a new poll. show. We gotta talk about the Spotify poll. Yes, uh, we've been putting up polls over on the Spotify page for last week's episode and last week we talked about the best games for every system uh at least starting with the nes aka the only system that matters which won't have any controversy at all no um but we did have a hard not that we had a hard time picking out the best games of uh the current gen be it uh ps5 and series x so i i threw it to y'all out there uh, what are the best games for the current generation, meaning PS5 and Xbox Series X? And the overwhelming majority of you said Metroid Dread. Yeah, who would have thought that? <laughs> but the best games for the current generation at PS5, Xbox Series X. All right, well, that, I mean, you put it in there, so I guess right. it counts. Okay, well, yeah, it's the I mean, only Nintendo game. Well, that was a joke one. You did that as a joke? That was a joke one. Cause Not very I, funny, yes. Will. It is funny. It's funny to me. I know that there's some contention as to whether or not the Switch is a current-gen system or a last-gen system. I think officially it's a last-gen system. Right. And the current-gen is just the PS5 and Series X. So that's what I mean by current-gen. Yeah. So yes, Metroid was the joke answer. I Y'all think fell for it. I am in the camp that I think the Switch is a is a current-gen. But although uh, to be fair, Metroid Dread is better than every game on that list. If we if we were including the Nintendo Switch games on the best games of this generation, I would probably think maybe Smash Brothers or something. Smash like that. Brothers, Odyssey, Breath of the Wilds, uh a lot of other games come to mind, obviously. Uh but. anyway, of all of the, you have other games that are actually for PlayStation 5 and Xbox yes. Series. Like the reason why this uh, poll even exists is because we couldn't figure out uh, exactly. the best game on the current gen consoles we couldn't think of any that were like deemed worthy of being the best game on the console yeah uh joey joey second... b in the chat says oculus quest 2 is better than all three systems <laughs> like no like i get it but no are you missing it right now i took it from you no i'm not missing it i just like, I get it, but I just don't, I still don't think VR is, like, going to replace mm-hmm. traditional systems anytime soon. Okay, I understand. That's all. Uh, second place, uh, with 24% of the results, uh, was nothing yet. <laughs> Which is where we were at. Yeah. And then third place was Halo Infinite. Yeah, it's not out yet, but it's still the best because Halo, bro. The reviews for that what came out, and there was some I'm interesting sh- stuff. I'm so shocked that like it's reviewing as well as it is. You know, what? I'm gonna. I have a topic. I'm gonna put. Yeah, while you okay. keep reading these, I'm gonna. I'll All put right, a topic in there. And then in fourth place was uh Forza Horizon Five, and then um, fifth place is Death Loop, and then sixth place and seventh uh, tied for sixth place is uh, Demon Souls and Returnal. So it seems like, and I don't know if it's just the cult of the new, or whatnot. But it seems like more people are happy and excited for the Xbox exclusives than they are for the PlayStation exclusives this generation, which is surprising to me because last generation, it was the exact opposite. 
I don't know. I think the I think the 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 wide majority of people are 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 more interested in PlayStation stuff. I just think people who actually play a lot of video games and are like <laughs> into the whole like culture, they are they get hype about Xbox stuff. Maybe. I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, th- that doesn't mean they don't get hype about PlayStation stuff. I just think that like uh like the the layman looks at the two consoles and they go, "Oh, the exclusives for PlayStation are better. I want those." Yeah, but I, I think because you know, Deathloop and Returnal, those are brand new games that are specifically made for the next gen, mm-hmm. whereas Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5, not only are those part of long-running series, but they're also technically last gen games because they also run on, you know, the Xbox One. And yeah, people are still much more interested in them than they are uh, traditional, true next-gen games. So I think that says something, too. <laughs> Silent Mongoose says, so PlayStation is for normies. Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> uh, here it is. I'm going to... I'm going to put this in the keep. Also, I forgot. I had a tweet of the week. I had one that was so good. I got to find it now. Um, put this... Uh, Uh, some things I feel like things are moving in this in this keep document. I'm not touching it. Okay. Uh, uh, beep, boop, bop, bop. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's a Spotify poll. Yes. Now we should probably talk about because it's the beginning of the month. And at the beginning yes, of every month, of the month, we like to do a little public uh, service announcement to you people. We like to tell you all about the free games you can get if you are subscribed to Xbox uh, Games with Gold or uh, PlayStation Plus, which you should Correct. get them because they're free games to you. Um, and sometimes they're enjoyable. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes I've, they're a total surprise. They're they're Yeah, they're free to you, meaning they're included in the thing you pay for already. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So we always start with the PlayStation five, mm-hmm. uh, or PlayStation in general. Uh, and all these games are available today, starting with Godfall challenger edition for the PS five and PS four. Is that gearbox? That is gearbox. Okay. This was like their PS five launch title. It was supposed to be like borderlands, but melee focused. And I don't think anybody was all that interested in it no it looked kind of cool well we were at the wolf then took a stance against gearbox and uh yes. then every other game company uh had their own controversies and we lost Decided track like oh so i mean we can, you know, we can be shitheads too yeah so we're like it's like now what we can't play games anymore yeah so i haven't played a gearbox game in a while but this looks pretty interesting I mean, it's free so whatever I don't think I'm going to play it still, but it looks pretty cool. I think this is, it's the Challenger edition. So I think this is slightly different from what the retail version was. Okay. Uh, Yeah, Godfall Challenger edition players can upgrade at any time to the Deluxe edition to gain access to both Godfall and the Fire and Darkness campaigns. So this is a slightly different version than what was released at the launch of the PS5. This latte is delicious. But over on the PS4, we mm. get uh, regular ass games. We got Lego DC Super Villains. Uh, and if you will scroll for me, computer. That's my birthday. Mortal Shell. I've never heard I've of this heard, before. I've heard good things about Mortal Shell. It is a Souls like game. But I forgot okay. what the difference is. The difference is it's not. <laughs> right. The difference is it's not well, like, Dark Souls or Bloodborne. So that's, uh, that's what Well, right. But like all like Souls knockoffs have at least one thing differentiating themselves from, you know, Dark Souls proper. And I don't test, remember what. Test your sanity and resilience in a shattered world as the remains of humanity wither and rot. Zealous foes fester in the ruins. They spare no mercy with survival demanding superior awareness, precision, and instincts. Track down hidden sanctums of devout followers and discover your true purpose. It literally is just Dark Souls. Oh, there's a gun. (laughs) Oh, there you go. 
I think it's just Dark Souls. But it looks, I mean, it looks really good for a game I've never heard yeah. of before. Who developed this? Cold Symmetry. Uh, they have made Mortal Shell. <laughs> all right, there you go. <laughs> that is all that they have made. The death mechanic is different, says Connery Jump. Okay. Cor- coronary Jump. Different how? I mean, hopefully uh, a little more forgiving. Well, I know in Dark Souls, <laughs> when you die, you have to like go find your loot again. Yeah, so in Dark Souls, uh, you die and you lose all your souls, which is like your currency and your like yeah. stats and stuff. And then you ca- you have to find your body to get them back. But if you die on your way to get them back, you lose all of them. So you only have one shot. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brat also- Worst Gaming says, where are the good games at? I'm so tired of, of mediocre or subpar games. All right, dude. Well, maybe we'll find out what Xbox has got going on. Spoiler alert. You're going to be really disappointed there. Um, hey, man. Lego DC Super Villains. It's finally time Sony had a Lego game included in their service. Yeah, yeah. Can't Xbox has this Lego game every every like month. Yeah. Um, but uh this is the most recent of the Lego games. Uh Xbox has been giving you all back catalog crap and 360 games. Uh mm-hmm. this is a PS4 game. It's the most recent of the Lego games. I've heard it's very good. It is the most recent? I didn't know that. The most wow. recent should have been uh, the Skywalker Saga, but Lord knows when that's coming out now. Yeah, it's been delayed like a lot. Yeah. It was announced way too early. Oh, yeah. So over on Xbox, we have The Escapist 2. People yes, like that, the don't Escapist, they? The Escapist 2, which is available all month long. Um, and then from December 16th to the 15th is Tropico 5. How many are there? I think there's like six. Tropico, of course, uh, being one of those game series that you always forget exists. And then it comes out with a new game. And then you remember, oh, yeah, a lot of people like Tropico. Name one. Person who likes Tropico? Yep. Can't. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> it does have a following. I just don't know anybody yeah. who, who, who likes Tropico. Uh, and then on the 360, which you can play on your Xbox One and Series X, uh... From now until the 15th, you get Orcs Must Die. And then from December 16th to the 31st, you get Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. There are six Tropicos. Okay. This is the worst uh, ex- uh, games with gold I've seen in a long time. This is a, this is not a... Not one of their better months. So, so I mean, they Xbox has kind of given up on games with gold in favor of Game yeah. Pass. Yeah, which is a shame. Because Game Pass and Games with Gold serve two different audiences. Uh, here we go. The loadout. Uh, Game Pass games for December 2021. Oh, what's coming and leaving soon. I mean, Halo. And you can play the campaign. Yeah. You can get the whole freaking game on Game Pass. And and, and this now? is some... There's a, I think there's like a campaign preview. It's very confusing. Yeah. Um, oh, December 8th. Tomorrow? The whole game? Yeah. That's well, that's when the game launches, yeah. So then yeah, you can get the whole ass game through Game Pass. And that's something I mean, we're gonna talk about it later when they get into the Halo reviews, but basically it's like, why would you buy Halo when you could just get Game Pass? Like even if yeah. you just want to play the campaign, just pay the dollar for Game Pass and then you get the whole freaking campaign and the and the multiplayer and everything. Is Infinite gonna stay free to play or no? The multiplayer is and will remain yes. free to play. Uh, the the campaign uh, you're supposed to have to pay for, but I think there's a preview right now. Uh, I don't know about the preview. Uh, anyway, you got Anvil, Arkval, Final Fantasy 13 2, Lawn Mowing Simulator, Will. You're a dad. There you go. This game's for you. Rubber Bandits, Stardew Valley. Town Scraper, one. Warhammer 40,000, Serious Sam 4, Space Warlord, Org- Organ Trading Simulator. So, Wait. Serious Sam 4 was a PC exclusive, and 
it came out on current gen systems today and unannounced like it wasn't known that it was going to be part of game pass until today when it launched really yeah that's crazy yeah halo infinite fred one piece pirate warriors four Woo! for the weebs uh, aliens, aliens, fire team elite among us. There you go. And and the gunk. Remember the gunk. The gunk will come uh, December sixteenth. Yeah. That's a uh, what's it called? Oh, is it not? I thought it was a uh, Tim Schafer's thing. No, isn't that something else? It must be something else because they didn't that had nothing to do with it. <laughs> it was developed by Image and Form Games, Thunderful Development, AB. Anyway, uh, and there's a bunch of games leaving. I uh, nothing. Guacamelee, yeah. Destiny Two is leaving Game Pass. Wow, that's kind of a big deal. And not to be outdone, yes, Nintendo with all of their library <laughs> graced us. With one single game. One single game. Uh, the original Paper Mario is coming to Switch Online plus expansion pack uh, December 10th. Was this part of the leak? I don't think that it was. No, this was part of the... I think they showed it in the preview. You remember when they announced the expansion pack and they showed oh. all the games coming? So we knew this game was coming. We also knew a lot of other games were coming. I don't know why we're getting one. Keep the hype up. They know what they're doing. I guess. Uh, yeah, December 10th, it'll be available on. Yeah, no, they straight uh, up showed Paper Mario in the in the, in the the yeah. preview. Yeah. Okay. Then why was I so surprised? <laughs> I was, like, really surprised that we got this. I don't know. Um... So when is it again? What's the date? December tenth. So December tenth. This okay. week. I don't Friday. Know how much I'm did we play this, this one? I think we did. We did. I think yeah. we did, and we were confused because it wasn't like a Mario game. I remember. Like, liking I don't think it a we got bit. the. I think when we, because this was a game back in our day, we rented games from a Blockbuster Video, and mm -hmm. I think it was like we were just confused by the concept of like this like action RPG. Like I remember liking it because because it was like a little silly and funny. But uh, yeah. I liked uh, the other one more, uh, Super Favorite Mario. I like that. Yes, more. Um, and then of course there's Thousand Year Door, which everyone says is the best one. Right. But I don't know if we'll ever see that game again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I your mean... second favorite Paper Mario game is coming to Switch. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I, uh, we, we just like to let you all know about the games that you can get as part of your mm -hmm. streaming service of choice or, or as part of the paid online service that you have with the console that you have. Most people who have a yes. console probably have a paid online service in order to play games online. Yes. Um, now, uh, I think the killers in the game of paid online subscriptions i think it's microsoft i think they're crushing the game right now oh yeah they, they've done so much to show that game pass is not only a viable option but the best option if you want like a good chunk of gaming at a low price and part of it is uh the freaking uh the, the fact that you can freaking halo is their killer app that was supposed to come out last year um yeah. and you can play that whole ass game completely for free and you don't even need the paid online subscription to play it online you can just freaking play yeah. it online the only problem with halo is the freaking the the upgrade system and the the, the cosmetics uh like the microtransactions don't really get you much in the and the um no, 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 I'm sorry. The upgrade system doesn't really get you much. And for all the cosmetics, you basically... They said you can get them all f for free, but really, you, you it takes... You need to buy them, basically. Right. Um. But anyway, Sony has stuff in place that is similar, but it's nowhere yeah. near as good. Yeah, I think 
Sony, like they have PlayStation Now, which is as close to their Game Pass competitor as they can get. But they don't really seem to put like the, the resources and the money and the marketing into it the way Microsoft has with Game Pass. Like everybody right. knows what Game Pass is. There's there's deals for Game Pass like every two minutes. Um, the fact that they put their own first party titles into Game Pass day and date with the launch of the physical release, like that says a lot right there. That means that they are fully confident in this product. Sony doesn't do that at all. I I think uh I I think part of what makes Game Pass as good as it is is that they don't really care uh I mean obviously they want you to get an Xbox so you can like be in their ecosystem yeah. or whatever. But uh they're allowing you to be able to do all of this stuff on PC and whatever. But that's because they also control the yeah. PC market. So that's why they kind of don't care. True. They're like they're like you you this is one of our consoles anyway. Your PC is ours. Um, well, and also, Sony too, can't really do like, that. The fact that they now have cloud gaming as part of Game Pass, so you can play it on your phone if you wanted to, and the fact that you can start playing on your Xbox, take it to your phone, and then take it to your PC all in one go, like that just opens up a world of possibilities that Sony can't really compete with right. at this moment. Yeah, Microsoft. I think, I think PlayStation now, like, y yes, you can play it on the PC. But it's not nearly as robust as like it is playing on a console, I don't think. So Microsoft uh, has the advantage that the, every PC is micro a Microsoft product. <laughs> Unless yeah. you're a wacko who has Linux. What a weirdo. What a weird nerd you are. Um, and uh, they also have one of the largest uh, cloud services in the world. Yeah. So they already have all of the infrastructure in place to be able to do stuff like this. And Sony just doesn't have that. They have to rent Microsoft servers <laughs> to freaking yeah. do PlayStation now. Yeah, they are they are renting Microsoft servers to do it. Um so even though they're not as big in the gaming scene as Sony, uh they they have the resources, they have more resources anyway. Um yeah. and I think it's that's a better strategy for them anyway to go with stuff like cloud stuff because like that even if you have like a like a, you can go to the microsoft store and get yourself like a dinky little dell like a, or or a dinky little pc or or, or a surface yeah. book or whatever and now all of a sudden you have a cloud gaming machine you know so like mm -hmm. being able to making these games available on low powered machines is a huge market share for them um but uh sony seems a little antiquated in some ways like that they have really yeah. bad backwards compatibility they don't want you playing stuff on their old stuff um they don't want you playing old stuff on their new stuff or they're trying to and it doesn't work that that well yeah why is uh playstation now uh so like i we always dump on playstation now because it's not really mm -hmm. i think that the library isn't really there but technically i remember it being worse and I, but I don't really remember why. I just remember it it's, was it's it didn't weird, feel as good. So part of the initial appeal of Game Pass was it wasn't cloud based. It was just you had access to this library and you could download it to your system and play the games that way. And I think you know that was like when they first launched the idea and before they could really you know build up what the cloud gaming service was going to be before they could stabilize it and release it to the public. PlayStation Now was a weird hodgepodge of uh, some games were cloud-based games, like PS3 games you play in the cloud, but PS2 and PS4 games you download to your PS4. Mm -hmm. And there was also, especially when it launched, it was very confusing, the pricing structure. Like, you could uh, buy a subscription for a fairly high price, or you can buy the games a la carte uh, and basically rent them per time. So it'd be like five dollars to rent it for an hour, uh, fifteen dollars to rent it for six hours and whatnot. And it was like a really weird. It wasn't just you know ten dollars a month you get all the games like Game Pass is, right? It, so it was just a confusing model. Yeah, M Microsoft tried to make it a lot easier for people. Yeah. Um. S s uh, John got the juice. Said uh, the library is bigger though, Bob. Is it not? And I just looked it up while you were talking. Uh, and they're the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, PlayStation on their website says 
over 300 PS4 games to download to your console. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no. Well, yeah, I guess there's really no PS5 games. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Microsoft says over 300 games. Right. Oh, so wait, no. Play- so PlayStation Now has, if you're including PS2 and PS3 games, I guess PlayStation Now would have more? Yes. But I mean, that's just the general estimate. Right. I think the well, no, now's got some got got some pretty good stuff. Yeah, now like PlayStation now has good games on it, has good titles on it, but you know, you know what? I take that back have... because on the the on the front here, mm-hmm. there's three games on the cover: Mafia, Fallout seventy six, and The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> right. I don't know if if the Fallout seventy six is one of their flagship games. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what that means for the service here. But I mean, you have Horizon. You got freaking Little Big Planet and all that stuff. Yeah. Um. Game Pass. You got whole ass Halo and Game Pass. I mean, you get first party games when they launch, which is kind mm-hmm. of a huge deal. So you know you're getting the you, you basically if you if you're an Xbox fan and you want all the first party stuff you just need an you need a PlayStation Now subscription you don't need to pay seventy dollars for the new games when they come out yeah I guess that's why it seems like the Game Pass library is bigger because there's just more value there's more good stuff yeah um the link says seven hundred plus games what link. Uh, oh, down here. PlayStation Now game library over 700 titles. So that's are we talking 700 compared to freaking Xbox's 300? Well, I don't think the size of the... Clearly the size of the library does not matter. Over 100 high quality console and PC games. All right, now give me a number. Now, now we got 400 plus Xbox console games. Oh, uh, that was a, as of September. Uh, it sounds like Sony's got a bigger library. Well, clearly that doesn't mean much because Game Pass is the one that gets all the headlines. Game Pass is the one that gets all the acclaim. Uh, nobody cares about PlayStation now. I think the convenience like is they, really is really what's what's yeah what's helping Microsoft like big time. Yeah. 700 for free or wait where they're not free there but you have to pay for playstation now yeah which sounds a lot worse than paying for xbox game pass but playstation now the price is uh the price is it's 60 dollars for the year which isn't bad mm-hmm. what is it for game pass you have to pay that per month right um i don't know what the deal is anymore i mean you can get the ultimate subscription as a year i think can't you but I thought that had to be fifteen dollars a month. Uh, now all of a sudden it's seeming a lot less convenient. Well, you're kind of selling me on the PlayStation one. <laughs> well, but that's what I'm talking about here. <laughs> like it doesn't. It honestly doesn't matter because at the end of the day, more people know what Game Pass is. More mm-hmm. people are probably subscribed to Game Pass than they are to PlayStation Now. Game Pass has the market share. Game Pass has. You know the greater pop cultural space of uh, when compared to what PlayStation Now has. Mm-hmm. I think somebody in the chat said it's the day one subscribe. Is the day one drops that does it? Yeah, Carl Kazi. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I, th- I think that's the hu- that's the biggest deal, and also that like you can play it on your PC too if you want. Yeah. Um, and it does seem. And yeah, you're right. When they when they announce a new game every month, it's like, oh look, what I got on my Game Pass, and I don't really feel that way with PlayStation Now. Mm-hmm. But with all that said, so, listen, PlayStation's already got a PlayStation Now. Com- PlayStation already has an Xbox Game Pass competitor with PlayStation Now. However, here's an article from Bloomberg saying that they ha- they're making a Game Pass competitor. What? Don't they already have one? I guess they, they want a new shiny one. Uh, Sony's Sony Group Corp's PlayStation division is planning a new subscription service to compete with rival Microsoft's popular Xbox Game Pass. According to people familiar with Sony's plans and documents reviewed so by Bloomberg, too long, wealth management. The, the service talk to me. 
the 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 Bloomberg was talking to me. I'm sorry. Continue. Oh yeah, I had to mute it before. Uh, the service, codenamed Spartacus, will allow PlayStation <laughs> owners to pay a monthly fee for access to a catalog of modern and classic games, said the people who asked not to be identified because they weren't authorized to speak to the press about the plans. The offering will likely be available on the smash hit PlayStation 4, which, which has sold more than 116 million units, and its elusive successor, the PlayStation 5, which launched last year... Uh, but it's still difficult to buy due to supply chain issues. When it launches, which is expected in the spring, the service will merge Sony's two existing subscription plans, PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. Currently, PlayStation Plus is required for most online multiplayer games and offers free monthly titles, while PlayStation Now allows users to stream or download older games. Documents reviewed by Bloomberg suggest that Sony plans to retain the PlayStation Plus branding, but phase out PlayStation Now. Interesting. Details on Spartacus may not uh, may still not be finalized, but documentation reviewed by Bloomberg outlines the service in th with three tiers. The first would be um, the first would include existing PlayStation Plus benefits. The second would offer a large catalog of PS4 and eventually PS5 games. The third tier would add extens would add extended demos, game streaming, and a library of PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. A representative for Sony did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Although that's, so, uh, that's the, huge. That yeah. sounds awesome. That sounds Although like a fix. <laughs> yeah. Although the PlayStation has outsold the Xbox in recent years, Sony has lagged behind Microsoft on the subscription front. With this new structure, Sony will look to compete with an Xbox feature that has been popular and lucrative. Game Pass, which is often dubbed as the Netflix for gaming, has more than 18 million subscribers. It allows users to pay $10 to $15 a month for unlimited access to several hundred titles. Xbox has built its overall strategy around the service in recent years, putting all of its, init putting all of its internally published games on Game Pass as soon as they're released. Xbox also made big acquisitions such as Bethesda Softworks last year for $7.5 billion with the goal of bolstering the Game Pass library. Sony is also putting resources into expanding its efforts into cloud gaming. The people familiar with the plan said uh, Microsoft's xCloud gaming streaming service became widely available earlier this year. So uh, this is interesting because uh, we were just talking about how like, why is PlayStation now so bad? Why do people not like it? Why does it sound so so icky? And mm -hmm. they're really just really what they're doing is they're just distancing themselves from the name and yeah. like kind of fixing some things. But like yeah. honestly, that's all that's a great idea because people were hating on PlayStation now for seemingly no reason. Yeah, <laughs> but but. If they're going to have PlayStation... Did they say day one releases? Cause, I mean, it says PlayStation 5 games um, and, uh, like, newer stuff, but I don't think they say anything about day one releases. It doesn't say anything about day one. So it's going to be in three tiers. Tier mm -hmm. one would just be your basic PlayStation Plus, basically what we have now. Tier two would offer uh, PS4 games and PS5 games. It doesn't say anything about day and date release. And tier three would offer demo extended demos, game streaming and PS1, PS2, PS3 and PSP games. So, so so I like that. Right now when I hear PlayStation Now, I assume it's streaming and I'm yeah. like no, thank you. So so having its own like, having a new service that is that like includes streaming, like that I feel like we need some that's much needed clarification to like break things yeah. up a little bit. Um, now, if they put that streaming on PC, yo, or or, yeah, or Mac think, even, like that'd be huge because you can you can yeah. use you can remote play into your PlayStation through a Mac. I haven't done it on PlayStation Five, but you could do it on a PS Four. Yeah. Um. So I mean, that sounds great. I, I, there is a PlayStation Now app for your PC. Mm -hmm. So you can cloud game PS uh, PlayStation games on the PC. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whether or not it's as good or as seamless as Game Pass, I doubt it. 
Kate asks, what do they mean by streaming? Is it cloud? Yeah, cloud based uh, uh, gaming. So, like, you know how the Nintendo Switch, yeah. uh, if you play like uh, uh, Control or uh, some Resident Evil games or anything that looks Guardi- like next Guardians gen. of the Galaxy, uh, Hitman 3. Yeah, they, you have to connect to the internet and it plays off of a server somewhere. All of the rendering yeah. is being done on a computer somewhere else and you are basically just yeah. getting a video <laughs> of, of what <laughs> your button inputs do um but it works really good sometimes yeah uh i think um, most of the time i've tried it it works great but i mean i usually have good internet where i where i'm at so. yeah the one time i tried it and i was doing it in handheld mode over wi-fi and it, and it worked fine um I, I had a fine experience with playstation no i'm sorry i had a fine experience with switch i had a fine experience with uh xbox cloud gaming and i had a fine experience with stadia believe it or not even though everybody was shitting all over stadia i was like this is great uh the Love only time stadia. i ever try i also had a fine experience with uh playstation remote remote play but the only time i ever tried playstation now was at e3 which you would expect it would be like the best experience ever because like they want to show yeah. journalists how it works, and it really wasn't that great. It, like you can like feel the lag and everything. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, so. Ever since I played it, then I mean that was a long time ago. Uh, I was like, I don't need this. But now that they're restructuring the service, it kind of sounds pretty interesting. The the only thing yeah. that would really like sell me on it is if like Horizon Zero Dawn or whatever the next game is called, Horizon Forbidden Vertical uh, uh, Midnight. When that comes out, um, then, uh, then uh, if that comes out day one, then that would be very interesting. Yeah, but, but I think it's for, for now to, Halo coming out Game Pass day one. I mean, that kind of it's kind of a huge deal. I think it's important to remind everyone that a Game Pass and even PlayStation Now they're not exclusively cloud based game services. Right, they do offer, especially with Game Pass, they do offer the option to download the game to your system so you can mm-hmm. play it off of your hard drive if you don't have a good internet connection or if you prefer that method of playing over streaming over the cloud, which a lot of people do. I feel like people are forget that aspect of it, that you can download it to your system because that actually helped, I think, Game Pass initially. The fact that you can have it on your hard drive and play it off your right. hard drive because at the time, that was so much better than playing over the cloud. You know, it, the few games that you could play right. over the cloud just didn't weren't you, you couldn't do it properly. And, and and yeah, that helped with messaging a lot because people were like, "Ew, cloud yeah. gaming, get me out of here!" And then uh, Game Pass was like, "Hey, you can just straight up download it. We don't give a shit." And then people were like, "Oh, that's awesome! I want that." Um, I also, somebody else brought up uh, PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus are completely separate. They're two separate uh, yeah. subscriptions. Um, I guess Xbox Game Pass and uh, Xbox uh, Gold. What, what the fuck is it called? Xbox, Xbox Live, Live Gold. Gold. Uh, those are also two separate subscriptions. However, there you can get it in a bundle called Ultimate, and then it's just one thing. Yes. Um, and that and that's part of like you know the whole marketing push that Microsoft has been so good with. Yeah, they they push ultimate. They're kind of so trying. One. Yeah, they're kind of trying to phase out gold, and it kind of makes sense yeah. why they would want to do that. I think Sony would really benefit from having one, one thing for their yeah. whole internet service, and I think that's something Nintendo is kind of doing. Believe it or not, I think Nintendo <laughs> did a pretty good job. They got one thing. Well, now now not so much. They have the expansion pass, right? Um, so they kind of made it a little more complicated. Uh, even though you don't get up much with their, with with Nintendo, uh, at least it's not confusing. You got one thing, and then that's it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think this is a pretty smart move for PlayStation. At first, when I heard it, I was like, they already have a Game Pass competitor. This doesn't make any sense. But now it makes yeah. it makes a lot of sense. They're kind of just it, restructuring it sounds- and and yeah, and giving a little more uh, a worth to the to the to the thing. Which I think is smart because I think, you know, Microsoft did a great job of selling people on the concept of Game Pass and it worked. You know, everyone's excited about it. Everyone's at least tried it. Um, And Sony, while they have, you know, the best selling console two generations in a row, I think they're losing a lot of, you know, goodwill 
and publicity to things like Game Pass. So, you know, if you, if you're the console king and you're failing in one area, you're going to want to try and fix that one area where you're failing. Yeah, I don't think they have much to worry about in terms of like uh, coming out on top in the in the console uh in this generation's console race because they're already doing great. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, I mean, you want to keep that lead ahead. So, yeah. Getting a good service out there is not a not a bad idea. Uh Still an Xbox fan though. I like my Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of UI issues with 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 the freaking PlayStation 5. I'm getting, getting Oh my goddamn! Here's another. another Here's Sony complaining time today. Oh boy, at everyone's stu- favorite at the studio. E was putting on light strips on his PlayStation Five, and he had to take mm-hmm. the side panels off. So he was like, "I might as well freaking put the M M dot two drive in here. I have an extra M dot two. I'm gonna pop it in." He popped it in. It was, I guess, a, the wrong M dot two. Like it wasn't one that was supported. Yeah, even though it fit and everything. So the system said, nah, dude, uh, you got the wrong M.2 in here. Turn the whole system off. Take the thing out. You can't play anything right now. It won't let you yeah. access the system at all. Like, yeah. like on a Switch, which the Nintendo does not have a good UI, but on a Switch, <laughs> you put a micro SD card in it that's formatted wrong or something. It'll say micro SD cards formatted wrong just to let you know. And then you can still play the fucking game. But on PlayStation... The whole system is like you can't do anything until you take that thing out of here. I think it has something to do with the fact because the PlayStation 5 was like, and even in the beginning, Mark Cerny like said, this whole system is built around its uh, internal storage. Right. It's custom made SSD, which is like super integrated to the system and it's super fast and your games will load instantly. There's no load times and whatnot. And they designed the M.2 slot it has to be a very specific kind of M.2 um, hard drive or right. solid state drive or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's very specific because it, it then integrates into the system the same way Sony's internal storage does. So I guess if you get the wrong kind of M.2 drive, it'll screw everything up. Then so, the system so doesn't know how to act. I completely that's the thing. I completely understand that it needs to be a very specific M.2 drive. I'm not faulting them for that. It needs to be fast because you want to be able to show off all yeah. the power of the PlayStation 5. You want all of the games to work at a very high speed cu- cu- coming off of the M.2. No problems there. My problem is if the fucking thing don't work, <laughs> just just don't use it. Just just bypass it. Say, hey, that don't work. You can still play your games yeah. though if you want. Like, that's stupid. So anyway, uh, what else do I have to complain about? Oh, yeah. And every single time I turn on the PlayStation 5, it's like you turned me off wrong last time. Every single time. The Xbox, never once. You can unplug it, plug it back in. It doesn't give a shit. How do you turn down the PlayStation 5 wrong? No, the thing is, like, you can't unplug it from the wall. Ever? Kind of, yeah. Like even if you like you power it down, but that's properly, the thing, it, and then you have to move it to another TV. Even if you don't, even if you don't, well, it's like one of those always on situations. But even uh, if you, even if you don't unplug it from the wall, nine times out of ten, the next time you turn it back on, it's going to tell you you unplugged it from the wall. Uh, but the Xbox has the same sort of always on situation, so I can update it. Yeah. I can turn it on from somewhere else. If I unplug it from the wall, it doesn't care. Plug it back in, nothing happens. It acts like nothing happened. <sighs> All you have to do is power it down right and then unplug it. I have I don't have this issue. No, you dummy. So there's like you can turn off the always on setting. But then it then it takes like four years to boot up. Um Yeah. But also, again, I'll say this again. Microsoft has the exact same setting and situation where it's always on, and it does not care if you unplug it from the wall. Power it down from the menu. No, that's not it. Kate, that's not it. It's still on. <laughs> it's still connected to the internet. Anyway. Remember when you just plug your Genesis to the TV into the wall? You put the cartridge in, you press power. 
So the Maybe the sun, uh, you guys are pissing me off. Blow it. Chat's pissing me off. The sun over here is saying that's rest. There's rest mode and there's power off. No, if you power it off, you still can't unplug it from the wall. There's a no, there's a setting in the settings to make sure it doesn't go into like low power mode when you hit power off. I'm not fucking crazy. And the Xbox has the same exact setting, but it does not care if you unplug it from the wall. Holy hell. Remember when we used to leave our Sega Genesis on if we wanted to save our progress in like Sonic 3? And remember yeah. how we're in 2021 and you have to do that for a flagship PlayStation 5 title? Yep. What we're trying to say is gaming was better when we were growing up. <laughs> Bob, I love it, but you're crazy. If you power off, not rest, you can just wait. No, no. Then the next time you plug it in, it says you turned me off wrong. Uh, we've you, do you think attest- Do you think I'm that fucking stupid that when I try to turn off the thing, I hit rest mode? Uh, we've Pap says, I can, I can attest to Bob on this. It doesn't matter if it's in rest mode or not. The same message always shows up. I'm not crazy. Birds aren't real. Anyway, all right. We just wanted to let you know Sony's working on a new Game Pass, a PlayStation Now Pass games. Yeah, you can get them on your PlayStation. <laughs> but what I also wanted to say was that Halo's coming out apparently tomorrow, even though the yes. multiplayer's been out. Um, multiplayer's been out. It's mostly just the single player campaign. There is an interesting conversation to be had about some of the reviews. And I think one of the reviews caught my attention. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we can just pull up this tweet for this. This is a whole tweet thread. I went down a huge rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Um, did I read notifications yet? No, we're like so behind I on know. notifications. Let me read notifications yeah. first. And then I want to talk about uh, the fact that Game Pass is making Halo Infinite all weird there's like weird (laughs) weird review situations going on right um robo jack thank you for the nine months forgot my prime sub last month sorry bob how dare you it's fine it's fine you're here i appreciate it anonymous gifted a sub to latin red thank you bro rp with 100 bits the following announcement had been paid for by the NWO, I mean the Wolf Bros. <laughs> NWO is a wrestling thing. He capitalized That is a wrestling thing. Yeah. I understood that reference. Alec said with the eight months, yell at me. Okay, fuck you. Josh Tor with four months. What's up, bros? Love the podcast. Easily the most entertaining way to get my video game news. Happy to use the free Prime sub to throw a bone to the bros. Thank you, bro, for being Thank a bro. You. Kikoba, thanks for the 25 months. Best game on every system, the air fryer. We're not. <laughs> not wrong. We're not, not are wrong. You, are you guys really working me up today? Circa RVN with the three months. Damn, I'm late today. I'm here now. You can start. All right, we'll start now. We're going to start the whole thing over. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to <laughs> Dynamite905 has resubscribed for three months. Thank you very much. You guys might not know this. But I consider myself a bit of a loner. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. But when my sister brought Bob home, I knew he was one of my own. What the fuck does that mean? That is a reference to the 2009 classic, The Hangover, directed by Todd Phillips of Joker fame. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I want to talk about Halo. It got reviews. Yes. The reviews are in. We got scores yes. ranging from 5 out of 5 for VG247. Venture Beat gave it a 5 out of 5. Windows Central gave it a 5 out of 5. Of course, Windows Central would give it a 5 <laughs> out of 5. Inverse, never heard of them, gave it a 10. Game Informer gave it a 9.25, which is very high. IGN, yeah. 9. GameSpot, 9. Destructoid, 9. Giant Bomb, 4 out of 5. Interesting. Still a good score. Metacritic, 87. Is it still there? 86, it dropped one. Oh, boy. And Open Critic? I've never heard of Open Critic. Uh, 86? Yeah, 86. 
and then 95% of critics recommend it. Now, that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is this guy, he he tweeted, uh, the Jeff Gertzman review is a fucking trip. And it is a trip. Is this the whole review? I don't want to read it if it's the whole review. I don't... I mean, this doesn't look like it'd be the whole review. Because uh, it's not really a review. Bomb. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so Giant he Bob works for Giant Bomb. Lot more. Yeah. He Giant? is. He's, he's Jeffrey Giant Bomb. So he gave it a four out of five. Uh, but let, I'm gonna read. I'm just gonna read this excerpt that was screenshotted for this because this kind of drum. Yeah. It kind of stirred up a little bit of controversy, I guess. So, so this is coming from Jeff Gertzman's mouth. So, what yeah. the heck am I actually reviewing here anyway? The $60 package, the pay money for the campaign package, is probably the worst way to play Halo. You'd even be better off buying a month of Game Pass, playing the campaign, and letting that lapse. So thumbs down to that full retail-style version of the game, unless you are somehow locked in a world where you refuse to play anything unless it's on Steam. I don't know why you would live that way, but you know what? People are weird. Did I say weird? I meant extremely particular. Hey, it's your money. I'd have to raise my hand and say, I am definitely extremely particular. Yeah. Uh, video, ga video game reviews have meant a lot of things to a lot of people over the years. To me, traditionally, the scored video game review is meant to serve as some sort of helpful advice for players who are on the fence about a particular product. When there was money on the line, I wanted to be there to help. At this point, I've written well over a thousand of these things. Timely reviews of new games couldn't be beat for the first decade or so of my career. They'd sit in the top slot, the traffic would roll in, everyone was, well, maybe not happy, but at least they clicked on a thing and perhaps glanced at the last paragraph of what I had to say about the game. This was the way of the world. The games cost money. I hate to see people waste money on bad games, and me and the people I worked with on the reviews team were the people who held the line in an attempt to keep you from blowing money on bad games. Simple, right? When the game is free and the subscription service is already something I'd recommend with a with or without the existence of that particular game, what purpose does this type of review serve? I could sit here and crank out the typical 1500 words about the next Halo. Playing playing the game takes way longer than writing about them. Uh it always did. In fact, let's just do that now. I'll get back to how I think this style of video game review is deader than dead later. Which is what makes me think that that's the whole review. <laughs> it seems like he's having an existential crisis. Yeah. Right before our eyes. No, he straight up is. And I kind of, I uh, I mostly agree with what, uh, what he said. The, the, I have a little bit of reservations. And, and what brought my attention to it was our good friend, Alex Van Aken, who is a Game yes. Informer guy. And he said... In the midst of a service, services like Game Pass, I think the purpose of a review remains the same for the average buyer. However, the resource they're deciding to spend changes from money to time. For many, the latter is more important. Reviews at their pure, purest are still relevant, in my opinion. And I completely agree with what he said. Yes. Uh, uh, to use an example, uh, recently... You know, Netflix, we all have Netflix. It's uh, $15 a month. You get access to all of these movies. Uh, judging by Gertzman's uh, mentality, why bother reviewing the individual movies on it when you can just watch it at, at no at no additional cost to you? You can just watch it and it doesn't harm anybody. You don't waste any more money. However, if you were to ask me which Netflix exclusive to watch, Red Notice or The Heart of a Fall... I would a thousand percent say the harder they fall because the harder they fall is funny. It's got great action. It has fantastic style, incredible performances. Uh, Red Notice, meanwhile, is like watching The Rock and Ryan Reynolds and Gail Gadot take a lot of money and light it on fire. <laughs> it, it is an awful piece of crap, but just because it's on Netflix doesn't mean it doesn't deserve to get reviewed. You still need to know like what Alex said, what movies are worth your time. Red Notice is not worth your time. The Harder They Fall is so much worth your time. Yeah. So that's something like that. Yeah. So, so like, when I, like, I don't really review games. I review, like, products and peripherals and yeah. stuff um, and, and hardware and whatnot. 
uh, when I do a review like that, the the thesis is always who is this for, and is yeah. it worth it for? F- and who is it worth it for? And is that person most people? Like something like uh, a Nintendo Switch is easy. Like is a Nintendo Switch worth it for most people? Probably. If you like video games, there's plenty of video games on there. It's not that expensive. It's very easy to use. Uh, it's really convenient and blah blah blah. Um, if it's something like freaking, I don't know, like the freaking controller with a fan in it, it's like I don't know. Do you have sweaty hands? Like I don't know. And I I, I don't like to talk about price when it comes to video games because uh, uh, then you get it gets all weird. But when I talk yeah. about products and stuff, uh, that's part of the review. Is like, is this worth it? Like, do you want to spend a hundred dollars on a on a controller like probably not it's got to be an awesome controller if you're going to want to do that so i understand uh needing to take the price into consideration uh i mean i don't like to add the price into consideration for a game but like when you talk about halo you're getting a whole ass game for free yeah and then you get another whole ass game on top of that if you have game pass like yeah that's that's sh- i think that should be considered at least a little bit and that's why jeff gersman is having an ex- existential crisis because every time he's reviewed a halo game he's it's been easy for him and this one yeah. it's this weird sort of service-based thing um but i also again agree with alex here who says that uh the commodity is now time it's not money anymore and uh yeah I think that that I like to view games more like that, and 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 we're we're old. We don't like to play forty hour games anymore. Yeah, I would much rather a game be eight hours. That's way more more worth my time. Um. So, yeah, that, I just thought this was an interesting take on the Halo uh, reviews and and stuff, yeah. and 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 the idea around Game Pass being so important and such a good deal for. Uh, a, a brand new huge triple a game like this yeah i mean he does make a good point where you could spend the 60 dollars for a, for just the single player campaign mm-hmm. or you can if you've never had game pass before you can just pay the dollar to try it for a month beat the game in that time frame and then cancel your subscription you get the same experience as everyone else but you only paid a dollar for it. You didn't pay the sixty dollars for it. So it does bring up questions of what what is the value of a game now? Uh, like, I mean, what you, is the value of your time now? Like, is your time worth sixty dollars or is it only worth a dollar? He he you know? he's he's right in that uh, the sixty dollar game is an awful deal considering yeah. you can pay if you've never had Game Pass before. You can pay one dollar for a month of the game of the campaign yeah. and then you're probably going to beat it in that time and then cancel your subscription and play the multiplayer for free because that's what you do on a uh, usually for halo even call of duty sometimes you play the campaign beat it and then jump into the multiplayer so yeah. you in this case you pay one dollar <laughs> you play the campaign beat it and then jump into the multiplayer and cancel your subscription or you know, failing if you have had Game Pass before, and even still, ten to fifteen dollars a month for Halo is a really good for a brand new Halo. Nonetheless, mm-hmm. that's a great deal. And even if you do beat it, you still have plenty of time to play something else. You you can play Psychonauts two. That's another sixty dollar game, right there. And you only paid fifteen dollars for two brand new AAA games. Yeah, and I don't really understand what else is free in in. Uh in uh halo like is the forge part of the main game or is it part of the multiplayer well the forge isn't available yet so i guess we'll have to wait and see uh and then there what else are we waiting for the campaign co-op well that i assume is going to be part of the main game Um, we're also waiting for um the ability to replay missions in campaign oh because you can't do that right now No, you can't. Wow. Uh, you can do it in every other Halo game, but not this one. So they said, uh, yeah, our bad. We'll add it later. So, yeah, I, I understand that we're in this weird time where, like, the, the the game is such a good value, in, but not in the traditional sense. Yeah. It's a weird sort of service-based thing. Uh, so, yeah, again, I completely understand where this is coming from. I played the multiplayer. It's freaking great. Uh, yeah. I do, it, is, it is a great time. 
Uh, and, and I was a little worried about that because, like, uh, I thought maybe, like, this style of, like, team-based shooter is, like, antiquated by now because uh, we're in a world of battle royales, and that seems more appealing to me. But, uh, no, I think getting a squad together and, and, and playing uh, uh, team-based games is still is still worth it. Um, yeah, I'm actually, anyway. like, oddly excited for this Halo game, and I don't think I could ever say that about any other one. You could play it on the... You have the Xbox One X right now. Yes, I do. You can play it on that. It'll probably run just go. fine. Yeah. Um, I set up the freaking uh, Series S in the in the living room for uh, my roommate to play. Yeah. Uh, Proud Prince, thank you for the raid. How you guys doing? Uh, Big Boosh, thank you for the hundo bits. Can confirm Bob is nuts. I just stopped what I was doing. Chose. chose the turn off PlayStation 5 option, unplugged the console, then plugged it back in, and it didn't yell at me that I did it wrong. You did something wrong. (laughs) I'm telling you, you did something wrong. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. I can never be crazy. It's all you. I'm not out of touch. It's the kids who are wrong. (laughs) GCXC Luke with 11 months. One month until cake. Just one month until cake. Oh, because it's a year. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Thanks for the support. Uh, all right. We got more news, believe it or not. Yes. Uh, what's next? Panda. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about controllers. Yeah. So Panda Global, esports org that does a lot of Smash Brothers stuff. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, we talked about how they're partnering with Nintendo to do uh uh tournaments for smash brothers which is like a huge deal because nintendo typically does not uh associate themselves with the normal popular smash brothers esports community they usually have like their own separate things um but they're partnering with panda global to do that and i think last time we talked about it we also noted that they had a controller they were working on and yes. uh, I was like, I don't know if this is officially licensed. This is this seems, I don't know. This might be like a conflict of interest. Uh, I don't know how closely they're working with Nintendo on the product, but uh, yeah. we didn't know anything about it. And now we do. Here it is. Now we do. Uh, modernized Panda GameCube controller hits Kickstarter instantly smashes goal. Uh, I kickstarted it. Um, oh, yeah. I did. It was $90. Also, yeah. there's a bunch of add-ons that aren't available yet. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's updates to this article. It's a short article. Uh, a, Kickstarter, a Kickstarter camp... Mm, oh, okay. Uh, the GameCube controller is one of the most popular controller designs ever released, so much so that Nintendo still releases special edition pads for Smash Brothers for Smash players to this day. Unlike Xbox and PlayStation's iconic controllers, though, the GameCube's has never been truly updated or refined to modern standards. That's where the Panda controller comes in. Designed by Panda Hardware, this controller hopes to offer players the modern, upgraded GameCube controller they've always hoped for. Using parts of the highest quality and coming packaged with plenty of customization options, this looks like it could be a very decent choice for pro players and those who still get plenty of use out of their old GameCube system. We'd urge you to give the video a watch if you want want to see it in action. I'll play it in a little bit. A Kickstarter campaign for the project went live just yesterday with a goal of 100,000, a target uh, that was absolutely demolished by eager customers within an hour. At the time of writing, this project has raised over 700,000. I think it hit a million already. It's Um, up to uh, 1.3 million. Holy hell. The controllers, which can be used with the original GameCube hardware or with modern systems via USB, interesting, are expected to start shipping around December 2022 with the low... Wow, that's so long. With the lowest tier costing $90. If you want to get your hands on one as early as possible, make sure to head over to the Kickstarter page to learn more. So the features that it has. Panda Stick Box. So it's their own version of the Stick Box, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's the octagonal gate. It probably yeah. has some sort of like uh, slippery uh, rims, like like uh, the like the Elite controller and like the Power A version of the Elite controller has. Yeah. Additional back buttons, uh, which I guess are programmable. Uh, custom length triggers, which is I want some freaking hair triggers. 
because there's there's uh, they, I mean it, they don't really do anything in ultimate. Um, yeah. Tactical D pad. I don't know what that means. Smooth tactile. Tactile. That makes more I think sense. That means Will. clicky. That does mean clicky. I'm interested. <laughs> uh, smooth buttons, which means not clicky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, infinitely customizable, so there's all different color options you can get. Uh, yeah. Customizable shape, pro shell sold separately, uh, so you have to pay extra for the pro shell. Expansion packs, so there's a wireless expansion pack you can slap onto the back. There's a wireless expansion pack, uh, which makes it compatible with Switch and PC through Bluetooth, I guess. And also a weight pack. Yes. You can add weights to it to make it heavier or lighter. That's awesome. Um, and then there's also, this is really cool. It's a detachable USB-C cable that is USB-C to USB-A, uh, I assume, or yeah. USB-C to GameCube. So you don't need an adapter. Yes. Unless you want to use the adapter. Um, and then easy press ZL and ZR. I don't know. I mean, it's just buttons, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, there was an update. Uh, can you read the update while I play the video? Uh, yeah, let me scroll back up to the top. Um, after just five days on Kickstarter, uh, the Panda controller has now amassed more than $1.2 million in funding for more than 9,000 backers. Wow. Thanks to the incredible response, several stretch goals, such as extended product warranties, a special documentary, and limited edition shells for the controller have been unlocked. The campaign still has time left, uh, to go if you're interested in securing your own controller. Rumble and D-pad switches. What does that mean? Oh, you can turn on or off the D-pad? What? Wow. Or does that mean the left stick will act as a D-pad? Uh, I don't know. Snap back dampening reduction buttons. Y access damp. Wow. Calibration button. Uh, removable gates. Oh, so you can take the whole gate out. So if you don't yeah. want to have a, an octagonal gate, you can just have it loose. Oh, here we go. D-pad switches. Did you know that some people can do an unintentional taunt in the middle of an intense match? Well, oh. you'll never have to accidentally uh, get hit by a taunt to get bodied combo again uh, by simply switching your D-pad off. And Rumble, uh, some players have a love-hate relationship with the feature. We get that. It's not for everyone, and it can be annoying to always have it turn, always have to turn it off in games, so now you don't have to. I feel That's like you're... That's I never thought about. I feel like you gotta have some fat hands to be hitting taunt while you're, play, while you're playing Smash uh -huh. Brothers. Maybe. I don't... I, don't, I feel like with... I don't know how you're reaching your thumb over that much, you know? Yeah. Seems weird. Yeah, because especially the way this one's designed, it, the D-pad is significantly further from the thumbstick. Yeah. I mean, it's on a on a freaking GameCube. It's pretty far. Yeah. I love the idea of tactile of a tactile D-pad, but I mean, I would never want to press the D-pad on a GameCube controller. <laughs> yeah. It's like just not in a good spot. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, here it is in the video. Um, I think this is really cool and interesting. Uh, oh yeah! Obviously, they're they worked with professionals to make this, and people have been using it already. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what the reception is going to be. I mean, it's not going to come out for a whole year, but yeah. I can't imagine these professional players who have been playing with a GameCube controller for over ten years. I can't imagine them. Uh, I can't imagine them playing something like this like 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 there's no there's no other scenario where that's become a thing where people have dropped first party controllers for third party uh, uh yeah. pro controllers the only example i can think of is scuff a lot of call of duty people uh prefer the scuff controllers but those are just modded versions of actual you know first party controllers yeah so, uh, I'm interested. I mean, I also at the same time, uh, this game controller is what twenty something years old. So like, yeah, it needs a modern redesign. And at first, I was like, people just gotta suck it up, and move on to the pro controller. There's no reason to have a game controller anymore. Then I got really into Smash Ultimate, and I was like, all right, I understand why the game controller <laughs> makes sense for this. So, um, 
this ha- I think this has potential. It's just, uh, you know, it's a lot of money. I mean, it's way better than getting yourself something like a friggin' uh, uh, multi shine or a modded GameCube controller because yeah, it's cheaper than that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm interested to try it out. It's got a lot of cool features, uh, and and I don't know I, what's the difference between the pro shell and the regular shell that you get. I don't understand that yet. Uh, I didn't see. It's also magnetic. You can you can down. rip off the shell, which is yeah. cool. The pow the power A elite control the fusion has has a mm-hmm. has a uh, magnetic shell. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, I don't know how how much the use. weight. I don't know how much the weight pack is gonna is gonna help. What's the difference between the pro shell and the GameCube shell? The pro shell is a separate shaped shell with a wider, more ergonomic grip that you can swap to on the fly. Shaped similar to the grip you'll find on a pro controller, it gives the controller uh-huh. a completely different feel. While the GameCube shell should be exactly the same shape you've known for years. I see. So like, I mean, yeah, the GameCube shell. Like like a GameCube controller, the the grips are pretty tiny, and the mm-hmm. the middle of the controller is like it like juts out, it extrudes towards you, like at the top. And the yeah. pro shell looks like a pro controller; it's smooth around the sides, so it's one big shape. Yeah. Uh, so that makes sense. That's pretty cool. It's twenty extra dollars though. Yeah. I think the coolest feature is being able to just plug it in USB. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the wireless pack is going to be a thirty dollar add on. Yeah, I don't want that. I'm cool. I'm cool with I the with, with the. I don't like. I I I'm, I have no problem plugging in controllers if the I cable's know. long enough. But I I've been trying to like get like become a completely wireless house when it comes to controllers, just because mm-hmm. it, it's more beneficial to my setup. So I think that would be something that interests me, and it probably interests a lot of people. How much is that pack? I just saw it. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, no. It, it it's cool that you have the option to make it wireless. Yeah, I also, also really like, like how there's an adjustment for the triggers. How you can make them yes. like hair triggers. The the controller is going to be ninety dollars to begin with. So spending right. an extra thirty to make it wireless, not the that's still less than an uh, Xbox Elite controller. Yeah, it's not terrible. Um, remember when we were talking about this? I brought up Scuff. I was like, oh, yes. Scuff, Scuff is the only other professional game controller that people would rather use than a first party controller, even though they're kind of first party. Well, they're like, fuck that. We're third party now. <laughs> Atlanta based Scuff ga- Gaming's, uh, made a name for itself with outstanding third-party controllers for the Xbox One, Series X, and S, and the PlayStation 4. And now the peripheral maker has set its sights on the PlayStation 5 with the new Scuff Reflex Reflex, Scuff Reflex line. Nailed it. A trio of high-performance PS5 controllers with four rear paddles, swappable thumbsticks and faceplates, and an onboard profile switching. That's a lot of extra functionality, but it comes at a steep price. Scuff's new reflex, reflex, nailed it, reflex line encompasses three different models. There's the basic $200 reflex, uh, which comes with all of the bells and whistles Scuff controllers have come to, Scuff customers have come to expect from its expensive controllers. It's got four removable programmable rear buttons, a very nice feature that's rare on other controllers due to Scuff's patent. Um... There's a button to switch between three different controller profiles for different games. Buttons can be remapped on the fly without having to pause the gameplay. Initially available in black, all reflex models will support swappable faceplates and thumbsticks, long or short, concave or convex. The Reflex Pro, which starts at $230, includes all of that, plus a high-performance grip, which is meant to increase the player's endurance and comfort and apparently costs $30 or so to apply. Both the regular and pro include the PS5's adaptive triggers, as well as vibration, reproducing the tactile feel of Sony's official DualSense controller. 
Uh, the final Reflex model is the $260 Reflex FPS, Scuff's first dedicated first-person shooter gamepad. The Reflex FPS does not have vibration motors, making it a much lighter controller that's free from distracting vibration. And both its triggers and bumpers are built to actively... To, both its triggers and bumpers... Um, What the hell? I just died in the middle of that sentence and both its triggers and bumpers are built to activate instantly eliminating trigger pull why removing features from a controller makes it more expensive is beyond me which is probably <laughs> why i'm not a controller salesman all three models of the reflex ps5 controller are available for purchase now exclusively on scuffs online store which likely does employ some sort of controller salesperson who might be able to help you figure out the reflex first person shooters pricing. So, so I, I have a lot of uh, uh, thoughts here. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things about scuff that everybody likes is that they have back paddles. Yeah, uh, obviously this has back paddles too. It also has profiles, like there's a little button you can change profiles. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is a pro controller basically and yeah one of the things that i hate the most about the dual sense controller i mean i love it and i hate it it's great for like relaxing and playing games the freaking adaptive triggers it's like really immersive and cool when you're playing something like returnal because they like yeah. react to whatever gun you're using it's horrible when you're playing something competitive because like i just it has to be a hair trigger i want it to be instant when yeah. i press my finger down and there's so much travel there um, this has adaptive or instant triggers. Dynamic resistance levels simulate the feel of different interactions from weapons to vehicles and more in supported PlayStation 5 games. Reflex FPS replaces the full pull advanced trigger with our dedicated instant triggers that provide a short mouse click action. This hyper fast limited motion is perfect for your favorite shooter games and getting those quick reaction shots off faster. So does that mean you have the option to choose adaptive or reflex FPS or is that a separate controller? I think that's a separate controller. The that is, reflex, you're right. You're right. Reflex FPS is the one with the active, the active instantly. That's uh, the one that the, that the article said you're losing a feature and it costs more. Yes. <laughs> this is one of those features that is the reason why the dual sense controller is so expensive. And this is charging you more for taking that out. Yes. <laughs> but I'd, I honestly, I, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of ridiculous, but it is a feature that I'd rather have. I'd rather have a mouse click. That sounds like yeah. kind of really cool, but it is ridiculous that it's $30 more. Yeah. That's crazy. So the Reflex I don't, I don't Pro, see how they can justify that. The Reflex Flex Pro is the one that has the adaptive. That's no the Pro. Both both the regular Reflex and the Pro have the adaptive triggers. Oh, I didn't know the there's a regular Reflex. <laughs> yeah. So the regular Reflex and the Pro have the adaptive triggers. The reflex FPS is the one that has mouse clicks for triggers, which I think is yes. really cool, but also really weird that it's $30 more to take out the adaptive triggers. Yeah, it also takes out um, vibration. That so is you're, also you're losing, weird. You're losing rumble. And, and, and you have such like a crazy adaptive rumble in the PlayStation 5 controller. That's another yeah. reason why the controller is so expensive, and you just you're just losing that, and you're paying two hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. Um. Another like this, I love the idea of this controller in theory because I kind of really that I'm not gonna lie, those mouse click triggers sound really appealing to me. I don't know about yeah, two hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, that sounds like it could be cool. Yeah. PlayStation doesn't have an old. Uh, uh, they're they don't have a version of an elite controller. No. So, like, this sounds really appealing as, like, an alternative to an Elite controller. Mm -hmm. um, but I forgot that Scuff has made third-party controllers before, not just modded first-party controllers. They, made, right. they had one for the PlayStation 4 that I had that was really cool in theory, but then I used it, and it fucking sucked. 
So it was a pain in the ass to connect. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to use the headphone jack in it, it had to be directly connected to the console through a USB. And mm. also, the headphone would disconnect at random. Uh, so I didn't really like it. Like, it was it was a yeah. cool controller to use, but it didn't work right most of the time. Like, I, like I had a lot of issues with it. Um, so if I'm paying $260 for a controller like this, it better fucking yeah. work 100% of the time. Um, I'm interested in it. I just don't know if I'm willing to spend $260 to try it out. Also, I like an Xbox controller more. So if I'm going to play something like competitive yeah. first person shooter, it's probably going to be on Xbox. Although, hey, scuff, make a freaking Xbox controller with, with mouse triggers. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Well, you have the, the elite controller that you can set it to hair triggers, which is similar. Yeah, I never touched the Elite controller because I'm too afraid because it's too nice looking. I got the Halo wear one. Gloves. Like, wear gloves when you... That's what I'll do. When you play. That's what I'll do. I'll wear gloves. So, yeah, I don't know. This looks cool, but uh, I am uh, I hope that the build quality is better than the last one because the last one, uh, I wasn't happy with it. Well, I mean, if they're charging you $260, I'd imagine they you know, make it a little bit nicer. <laughs> the last one was 200 yeah. Um, I think it would just randomly the whole controller would randomly disconnect at times. <laughs> it's like it like it was horrible. Like it had we really yeah. weird issues. Um and this one, so the regular reflex is only two hundred dollars. Only. Only he says. Look at yeah. Scuffed Instinct, it's the version for Xbox, okay? Yeah, I'm looking that up now. Apparently, Microsoft licenses uh, patents from Scuff to make their Elite controller. Wow. I wonder Including if they have a the patent for... Pat wow. Scuff has the ask. patent for the back panels. Interesting. Yeah. Now, does this have mouse clicks for the triggers? No. This only comes in two versions. Mm -hmm. The Instinct and the Instinct Pro. So it does not come. Oh no! Wait, Instinct Pro adds a competitive edge with non-slip performance grip and instant triggers that switch from regular to a mouse-like click with the flip of a switch. Oh, and it's only two hundred dollars. Oh, I want that. Oh no! Am I gonna spend two hundred dollars today? <laughs> oh no. I already have an elite controller. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to test that out. I'd have to see the difference between uh, the triggers yeah. on an elite controller and the triggers on something like this. Very interesting. When did this thing come I mean, out? This it, sounds it, like a video. I think this came out a while ago. I know. I remember vaguely hearing about this, but I was like, there's an elite controller that exists. And if, the, if I can yeah. get mouse clicks, I mean, I'd really, I'd, ra I'd rather have a tactile keyboard click, but... Right. If I can get a mouse click out of a freaking right out of my triggers, then I would play use this over an elite controller every day. Right. Oh God, what a I live a stressful life. Uh I believe it came out in August. That's when all the unboxing slash reviews can't came out. Interesting. Well, maybe I'll I'll have to do some digging. I'll have to do some tests. Yeah. Boys, we got more news. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we can plow through Titan the rest of this. Yeah. Titanfall 1 is being pulled from all digital stores after ye a year, or oh, sorry, years of struggling against DDoS attacks. What is Titanfall, Will? Titanfall is a multiplayer only first person shooter uh that was a, originally available for the xbox 360 xbox one and pc it is not uh the sequel titanfall 2 which has an excellent single player campaign and a very fun multiplayer campaign that everybody should play um this is the game they originally released that didn't have a single player campaign for some stupid ass reason 
Is there? Uh, did they continue this franchise after that second game? It sounded like this people oh, yeah. really liked the second game. Did they make anything else after that second game? No. They instead made Apex Legends, which is sort of in the universe, but not really. Oh, I've heard of Apex Legends. <laughs> anyway. I just wanted I wanted to I just wanted to say, uh, parallel that this is in the same universe as Apex and this is what this is the reason Apex even exists. Yes. Uh and Apex is the reason why we have not gotten Titanfall 3 yet. True. Uh the decision to end Titanfall sales follows follows a back and forth battle with hackers going back to 2019 resulting in mostly negative user re uh rating reviews uh for the game on Steam. There were flashes of hope earlier this year. Respawn told players that help is coming in April, but by mid-May, the situation was as bad as ever. And in mid-July, Respawn community coordinator Jason Garza acknowledged that the demand of Apex Legends meant that only one or two people were still working on Titanfall support. The studio said in a message posted to Twitter that it is halting sales of the game today and will remove it from subscription services on March 1st, 2022. And they say, rest assured, Titanfall is core to Respawn's DNA, and this incredible universe will continue uh, today in Titanfall 2 and Apex Legends. And in the future, the franchise is a North Star for the caliber of experiences we will continue to create here at Respawn. Uh, so... That's unfortunate. You can't play Titanfall 1 anymore. But I guess, like, who's really playing that? I, why I wouldn't they have moved on to Titanfall 2 at least? Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, I think it sucks that they couldn't figure out how to stop the DDoS attacks or, like, right. make it stable to to begin with. The fact it took so long to do I don't, that. I, I mean... I, it, I'd, I'd be... I, I don't know if they couldn't figure it out or if it just wasn't worth it for them to figure it out. Mm. I just think it always sucks when a game becomes unavailable, you know, because you're losing access. You're losing access to history, basically. When yeah, it happens. Yeah, it sucks. Well, it's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, which is why physical media can never die. Titanfall but... Two, I think, is on Game Pass, right? I think so. Titanfall Two is part of EA Play, which is included in Game Pass. Titanfall 2 is one of the best single-player first-person shooter campaigns I've ever experienced. Yeah, Titanfall 2, like, you play Titanfall 2, and you're just like, where was this single-player campaign during Titanfall 1? It's incredible. And, and then and that's another thing that put a nail in the coffin for Titanfall, is that uh, it had it was one of the best games that came out that year. It came out the same day as Battlefield, I think, that year. Same? No, it came out... Sandwiched in first it was Call of Duty, right? Then Titanfall two, and then Battlefield. So everybody was all hyped up for this campaign, and then it got just murdered by two juggernauts yeah. right right next to it, and and it, it the player base kind of died out really quick. It, it got it got it was an amazing game, but it got buried. Uh, and then EA parent company was like, not selling anything. Get the hell out of here. And then yeah. the Hail Mary side project was Apex Legends, and they were like, what's this? Why yeah. is everybody paying attention to this? Do more of this. Yeah. And only ever do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what? You want to make a single player only Star Wars game? Uh, fine. But that's not going to sell anything. Right. 10 million copies later. Critical acclaim across the board. So I think... I, I also think EA is the reason why Titanfall 2 did so bad. Like, don't release it then. Yeah. No, Move 100% it. <laughs> EA is the reason why Titanfall 2 did so bad. Actually, yeah, 100%. Battlefield's EA. Yeah. So they 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 killed Titanfall 2. They killed their own game. Yeah. Um So anyway, yeah, uh I also think Titanfall 2 is one of the best single player first person shooter campaigns I've ever played, but also same time, uh now a lot of first person shooters have those similar movement mechanics. So it's not yes. as it's not as interesting anymore. At the time, it well, was like a huge deal. Now it's like, I mean, Apex does the same thing. Well, Apex does it. But I still think Titanfall 2 does it and implements it in a way that's creative and still fun. It doesn't feel gimmicky. It feels natural right. and a part of the game. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas when like Call of Duty does it, you're just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, who are you trying to impress here? Yeah, Call of Duty tried to mimic it. I mean, well, Titanfall yeah. mimics a lot from Call of Duty because it's a lot of the same people who right. worked on Call of Duty worked on Titanfall. But uh, but also Titanfall 2 had a really good story about the love between a man and his robot. <laughs> Like that was really that was a really fun story, and, and like most first person shooters, just have the same story every year. It had a really good, uh, uh, really good level design. It, it, like it, yes. there was like platforming and stuff in the in the levels. It was like awesome, and yes. like you would there was you would you'd be like freaking platforming and shooting people and stuff. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was great, and there was like puzzles with with the platforming and shooting involved it was sick but uh yeah just uh, freaking it got buried that year yeah. um but anyway this is about Titanfall 1 not being yes. uh they're they're closing the servers which i guess yeah i mean it sucks we're losing a piece of history but i guess in the grand scheme well that's just closing the servers they're taking it all, they're not making it available for purchase anymore true that's I the real that. that's the real uh, sad part of it that's kind of a huge deal yeah um, speaking of, uh, one of those guys yeah. is going yeah. to Battlefield. Uh, Electronic Arts is making major changes to its development structure as it focuses on growing and expanding the Battlefield series following what has been a challenging launch for Battlefield 2042. The future set military shooter launched in November and was swiftly criticized for a lack of features found in previous games and for its many bugs some of which, including the infamous unable to load persistence data bug, prevented users from playing entirely. Perhaps the biggest change being announced today is EA is formally announcing the creation of a Battlefield universe that will seemingly span multiple games and offerings, uh, which will be developed by different studios across North America and Europe. Additionally, DICE GM Oscar Gabrielson is leaving the company to pursue new endeavors outside of EA. The shakeup also includes Respawn's Vince Zampella taking a larger role as the new overall boss of the Battlefield franchise, while Halo designer Marcus Leto is building a new development team in Seattle focused on injecting more storytelling into the Battlefield universe. Ripple Effect, the developer of 2042's Portal Mode, is developing a new Battlefield experience in the 2042 universe. In the immediate future, EA told GameSpot that DICE, Ripple Effect, and Leto's new Seattle studio will work together on expanding upon and improving Battlefield 2042. The other Battlefield games and experiences in the works are meant to serve as extensions to a degree of the new Battlefield universe that EA is trying to create. There are no specifics available about the new games and experiences that EA intends to create or when they will be released as of yet. As for Leto, the man... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, please, please, please. Finish. As for Leto, the man who designed Master Chief and played a major role in making Halo what it is today, he is heading up a new unnamed studio in the Seattle area. It will collaborate with DICE and Ripple Effect in the aim of expanding the narrative, storytelling, and character development opportunities in the battlefield series there is no word yet on what this means in terms of specific products or strategies however so vince zampella uh, is one of the guys who led infinity ward and they released call of duty modern warfare the original in 2007 and also modern warfare 2 which is some of the best Mm -hmm. call of duty games of all time uh, then they took that their skills and they were like, uh, we can we're gonna fucking we don't want you anymore. We're doing our own thing, and they made that's not exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah, I see right here on the Wikipedia article. There's a whole bunch of lawsuits and shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, long story short, uh, Activision found a way to get Zampella and his partner Jason West fired, so they wouldn't have to pay them bonuses. Ah. So it happened. It looks like they negotiated their contract to be a bigger deal for Modern Warfare Two, and then they probably yeah. did the same thing again. And Activision was like, "Get out of here." Yeah, I, I forgot there was actually a code name for like it was like Project Avalanche or whatever, where the whole the whole point of that project was to find a reason to fire <laughs> West and Zampella so they wouldn't have to give them the bonus. 
Nice. This is all, you know, part of, uh, hey, remember, activism sucks. Uh, all the articles that have come out recently. Th that's also why Modern Warfare 3 wasn't that good. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, they made Respawn. Uh, yes. And they made uh, Titanfall. And yes. then they made Titanfall 2. Mm -hmm. And then Apex came out of that. Yes. Uh, I, I guess they had something to do with it, right? Uh, Zampella? Yeah. yeah. Zampella, so, Zampella is still part of that, yeah. So now he's moving to the Battlefield franchise? I don't understand. Because Battlefield, like, the only reason it's a franchise is because there's big... There's big team battles, and they're they're in different time periods, right? You have future Battlefield, you have past Battlefield, and then I guess you have Battlefield Bad Company, but that's not like, not really a thing anymore. Yeah. And then uh, then what the fuck? Like who cares? Like I, I, I would love. We need what we need is more, and it's EA. That's stupid. What we need is more out of the Apex franchise. Go back to make a Titanfall 3 with throw some Apex characters in there. What the fuck? That would be huge. Starting with Battlefield 3, it became very clear that EA wanted Battlefield to be their Call of Duty killer. That's really and unfortunate. <laughs> every Battlefield entry since then has tried to be a Call of Duty killer. And with varying degrees of success... I think people generally liked Battlefield 3. Battlefield 4 multiplayer was unplayable at launch. Uh, Battlefield 1, people generally liked. Uh, Battlefield 5, nobody likes. And it looks like this game, nobody likes either. So rather than, you know, realizing that this this game isn't working and they should probably just stop for a while, no, they're going to double down, they're going to expand it, and they're going to turn it more into... Something it really shouldn't be. Well, what Battlefield was was just an online multiplayer game with, you know, with a lot of people. Now, it's literally just the online component of Call of Duty. Yeah, I think that if they want to make a Call of Duty killer, they got to focus on the Battle Royale now. I mean, Apex is their biggest Battle Royale killer. I mean, Apex is their biggest Call of Duty killer right now. Because Call of Duty is it's switched. The Battle Royale is the thing that people want. Nobody cares about the main game anymore. Um, yeah. and Apex is their best fight against that. And if they want to go after the main game of Call of Duty, the Battlefield ain't it, man. Yeah. They, they had a franchise that could go toe to toe with Call of Duty in terms of like feature list. It was called Medal of Honor. Mm -hmm. And they shot that in the foot before it got out the door when they tried to bring that back. I remember that too. That was a real big disappointment. Because we were we and were with, big fans of Medal of Honor because we had a GameCube. You you want to go full circle? Zampella got his start on the Medal of Honor series, mm -hmm. and then he moved over to Activision for an Infinity Ward, and you know made Call of Duty one two and uh, the first two Modern Warfare's. And now he's back at EA doing Battlefield. It just I don't know. <laughs> we were big fans of GameCube Medal of Honor. Um, yeah, those were great. Yeah, and then when they made the new ones, I was like, I've never been more disappointed. <laughs> that was, it was like really bad. Um, when they made the modern versions of Medal of Honor. Uh, the first the first one was like, I get it, but I feel like this is such a misguided attempt <laughs> you you can kind of get it like if you're like a suit over at ea you're looking at numbers and you're like titanfall is not going to do good get out of here we got to throw all of our money into battlefield battlefield's what sells but yeah. that's not what people want people hate battlefield right now the last this new one people didn't like it and people love titanfall 2 but it didn't sell because they fucking shot it in the foot they released it at such a yeah. pe terrible time so i mean I think uh, I think it's really weird to put more stock into Battlefield. I mean, I, I get it; it's like a big franchise for them, but man, I mean, you have so many other opportunities that you're just missing. Yeah. You know, I think I think it might be time to like put Battlefield to rest for a long time. Yeah, because it is clearly not doing what you want it to do. And that is because you're trying to force it to be something it's not. 
Right. I, I get the, I mean, the whole appeal to Battlefield is the big team battles. Uh, and I mean, you yeah. got to make sure that that's a good game if you're releasing that. You can't have it. I mean, you're going to run into a lot of glitches if you're going to have such a big team battle and all these vehicles and stuff. Yeah. And they just freaking farted it out. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what's happening over there with EA. I, I'm all these big yeah. companies are kind of like, uh, uh, doing a lot of weird stuff right now. I mean, it sounds like they're trying to save the series as much as possible. Cause it seems like of all the franchises that EA has created and killed, um, mostly because they wanted to kill them. Battlefield seems like the one they want to do everything to save. Mm -hmm. but I just don't think what they're doing is going to work. I mean, Vince Zampella, if they're going to, if they're going to resurrect it, he's the guy to do it. Right. So he seems to be the only person who knows what he's doing. Yeah. So, uh, maybe he'll pull it out, but I just, I feel like it would be more interesting if they did some other things. Um, anyway, what else do we got? We got we were supposed to be plowing through these. Um, yes. <laughs> well, these we can plow through real easy. Good. Uh, Rockstar is delaying the physical releases of the GTA trilogy, the definitive editions. Wow. Um, the Xbox One and X and Series X and PS4 physical releases will now be coming out on December seventeenth. The Switch version will be coming out in twenty twenty two, early twenty twenty two. Uh, I, I'm not surprised at all. This game came out and it had a lot of problems. <laughs> I am surprised that the Xbox and PlayStation physical releases are being delayed only by a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that's enough time to get the games to snuff for like a physical right. release. Right. You know, that to me says that they're, basically printing to disc what was originally available and when you get it if you don't you know update the patches and whatnot you're not getting you're gonna get the launch versions of these games yeah i don't know what the point is here and i don't even i'm not even entirely sure if the switch version uh oh you know what it is will it's because what? the hot coffee mod's still in it <laughs> it's because the game files are still there so they have to get that out of the game if they're going to get an ESRB rating on it. Oh, maybe. That's probably... I'd say that's it. It's a very, it's very possible. I think the Nintendo version, the Switch version, is published by Nintendo... is going to be published by Nintendo. It is. It is. So. Also, uh, Nintendo is worse at a... At a uh, publishing like like you need to, a lot of lead time to yeah make the switch version of a game like they need to review it way or like it they take a really long time so I, I that makes a little also it's the least powerful console here so uh um, yeah it's gonna take more polish but um uh, i don't know uh the game had a really had a really uh sh it struggled at launch it, it it it's got a lot of problems people are memeing on it pretty hard uh, it is this year's cyberpunk our friend greg got it and he would text me every single yeah. time the game crashed he played through <laughs> uh three i think yeah uh and it crashed 14 times wow like game like not just crashing but game breaking like uh yeah like uh like soft locks and stuff so mm -hmm. uh yeah, the games the games got a lot of problems. So I'm not surprised it's delayed. I'm sure I mean it could be the hot coffee mod, it could be anything else. It could just be they're trying to iron out some things. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh where are we going next? Uh Nintendo loses court case over eShop pre orders. Uh, wow, Nintendo finally gets a cease and desist. <laughs> What about uh, uh, the turns table? Uh, reportedly, the lawsuit focuses on Nintendo's policy of not allowing refunds on eShop pre-orders. In September 2022, this policy was amended to allow gamers to cancel a pre-order as long as it was still more than seven days ahead of the game's release. 
This policy may need further revising now uh, that work by the Federation of German Consumer Organi uh, Organizations and the Norwegian uh, Consumer Council has led to Nintendo losing an appeal in court. Apparently, Nintendo has already accepted the result of the court case. Uh, summary of the case translated from German states that Nintendo offers video games for download on the eShop before the game's official release date. These downloads often include software comprehensive preload of the game, uh, with the game being unlocked via update on the official launch day. Similar online purchases found in digital storefronts can be can usually be canceled within 14 days without giving notice, but Nintendo opted to revoke the right of withdrawal and rely on apparent legal ex expect exception the lawsuit argued that the, as the download made available after the pre-order did not yet contain a usable game the contract between nintendo and the buyers wasn't fulfilled i like it i like what they're so, what they're saying yeah so basically uh this court case which is which was in germany uh might have long-lasting effects on the eShop around the world you might be able to cancel your pre-order all the way up to the last second, basically, to get your money back. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, I, I understand that some people could, like, maybe uh, data mine it and rip the stuff off of the off of the preload or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's a little anti-consumer. And I think that uh, Germany's doing good right now. Yeah. They're fighting for the rest of us, Will, just like yeah. they've always done. <laughs> well downloading co uh, content in general has always been a struggle for consumers especially on the game side because you know you can't really return it you can't really you know trade it get money for it or whatnot mm -hmm. uh if they remove the game from their store that doesn't necessarily mean you will still have access to it you look at something like pt you know, once yeah. that was deleted, you lost it. So we need a lot uh, of uh, we we need a lot of protections in the digital space. Yeah, and I think this is a step in that in the right direction. All right. Uh, well, why don't you read the next thing while I uh, block all these bots that are in our chat all of a sudden? Okay. <laughs> Uh, the Rock is in Fortnite, and he's responsible for turning the world upside down. So I'd like to take I, a minute and sit right here uh, and tell you how uh, Dwayne the Foundation Johnson got into Fortnite. So I I saw this video, and it was interesting. Um, but uh, I don't know, like... I mean, I I I've see, I, I like some of the cutscenes in Fortnite, and I like like how they like have in-game events and stuff. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um. I only saw the one part where the rock comes out, and then I didn't see anything else. It was hard to find out what was happening. I kind of wanted to see the whole thing. Yeah. Um. But it seemed uh. It, it was it was cool, but at the same time, it's well. Just read the article. I'll explain my thoughts later. Uh, after months of speculation and a sly Instagram tweet tease, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is revealed as the voice of the Foundation and the dramatic conclusion to Fortnite Chapter 2, watch The Rock turn the island upside down, literally. The Foundation is the leader of the Seven, an organization dedicated to keeping the imagined order, I.O., from abusing the nexus of all reality in Fortnite, appearing as a helmeted figure in earlier... appearing as a helmeted figure... Earlier in Fortnite's second chapter, as well as in the special Batman Fortnite crossover cover, ugh. today, <laughs> the Foundation's face covering finally came off, revealing the handsome mug of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Johnson's appearance is no surprise to keen-eyed Instagram followers. A couple of days ago, the wrestler slash actor slash the most electrifying man in the sports entertainment uh, posted what looks like an ad for his Zoa energy drink on his Insta, but inside the refrigerator housing the beverages was a replica of the Foundation's helmet. Oh, uh, the interesting. The Foundation played an important role in today's one time only the end event in Fortnite as the Cube Queen, who's been besieged the island for a large portion of the season of uh, season eight, 
prepared a final attack on the forces of good. The Foundation arrives at a familiar bunker deep underneath the island's surface, just in time to save Jonesy from a transformation at the hands of the sinister Dr. Sloan. Jonesy and the Federation make their way to the bunker's control room, where the pair prepare to take us to the other side. Cut to the surface, where another member of the Seven, known as the Scientist, voiced by someone sounding a lot like Joel McHale from Community, leads players to the island's core as the entire landmass begins to tilt. Players are shot out into the island, where they witness the final demise of the Cube Queen. Turns out, even a being possessing unlimited power can't survive having an entire island dropped on her head. So, uh, this is a big event that basically changed the whole map. I think yeah. they said it was the original map, but like mirrored or something. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, anyway, I watched the video of the rock reveal and, uh, it's kind of, I don't know how I feel about the way they did it. You know how in like your favorite thing that they do in superhero movies, like when Iron Man, when Robert Downey Jr. wants to talk, he takes the, he hits the button to take his mask off. Yeah. The foundation has never taken his mask off. And just mm -hmm. randomly, for no reason, he takes his mask off and all of a sudden it's The Rock. And then from that point forward, it's The Rock's voice. When it's never been The Rock's mm. voice. Right. At least to my knowledge. I mean, I feel like we would have been able to figure out it was The Rock if we heard his voice. Um, yeah. So, like, that's weird. That was weird. It seemed like a really weird way for him to reveal that he was The Rock. Um, but, I mean, it's cool that he's in the game. And I think it's cool that they had, like, a big way to, like, to, like change the map and everything. I mean, at this point, who isn't in the game? Like, it was just a matter of time before they found a way to put The Rock in there somehow. Black Adam is coming out eventually. I'm sure they would have put him in there. Um, I'm surprised they didn't do something for stupid fucking Red Notice. Uh, they, or the they, Jumanji they, movies. They have Spider-Man. Did you see that? Spider-Man looks I did sick. see they have Spider-Man. Apparently, he's he controls very well. Like, the yeah. web swinging in it is very good. It looks a little better than The Avengers. <laughs> Uh, battle, battle tank Bob says something that is a good way to piss Will off. Masks changes voices like Batman. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me let me just, yep. let me just teach you something here. Uh, just know, just know that not everybody uh is as as big into Batman as you. Okay, just breathe a little bit. They, sometimes you need to educate people. Okay, Batman has trained himself mm -hmm. to make sure that nobody can tell the difference between Bruce Wayne and Batman. That includes the way he moves, the way he stands, the way he talks. He puts on a performance when he's Batman to heighten his abilities and to scare the criminals that he's fighting. The voice is a part of that performance. The voice changer is not necessary. It is a it is an unnecessary explanation to something that has never needed to be explained in the 80 years that he has existed as a character. Until the, guy, the Snyderverse. <laughs> until the Snyderverse had to like actually take time out of the fucking movie and explain why he sounds like Megatron instead of sounding like Batman. Uh, Battle Tank Bob comes back and says, Batman is also the rock under the mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh I mean, I see no evidence saying otherwise. It's true. Um. Uh. So, yeah. Uh, I do think I did. I thought it was weird that uh, it's all of a sudden the Rock, and then it's just the Rock's voice. But yeah, I mean, it. I I think it's cool that the Rock's at the game. Um. Anyway, is that the end? That's it. Wow, we finally, boys, we made it. We finally made it. We got to the end of all of the news, but we left out one little, little simple thing. Well, let's do it. Here's the sweet of the week. Uh, this is from John Baker. It says, "Here comes the motherfucking percussion section," and it's just a, it's like a guy at an orchestra with a hammer and a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a thing that they do. Yeah, that's an actual instrument. <laughs> and like people in front of him are bracing themselves and the guy to the left yeah. of him is like looking at him like, oh, here it comes. Here comes the percussion section. <laughs> I thought it was funny. But anyway, 
uh now we can talk to you no we're gonna talk to, we're gonna talk to last week's wolf den live people over on the youtube we're gonna talk to past people yes we're gonna talk to people who left comments over on the youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast uh, George McFarlane said the fact that there wasn't even a mention of Nintendo Land for the Wii U is a disgrace. Uh, that game's not that great. Uh, that game should have been the Wii Sports of the Wii U. Yes. And then you know what? I might have thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't it? It came, it came packaged in with a lot of Wii U's, but I don't think it came prepackaged like with every No, Wii I think U. it came with ours. Yeah, it came with... A, I, I think it, it became a pack-in game, but it wasn't like always no. you know what it was i think it was only a pack-in game with the 32 gig model oh not the 8 gig model mm. okay i mean it was a good game it was like mario party light yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and you know how i feel about mario party mm. uh daniel misner says uh Suikoden 2 best PlayStation game of all time I am of course greatly biased it's the reason I love JRPGs and I've played it front to back several times I know it's a bit too weeby for you bros but there it is that is a that is a very weeb game it's a very weeb game how dare you yeah. one of these days I'm going to play through a whole JRPG maybe I'll do that after I play Zelda uh, uh you should do the original Final Fantasy 7 I'd rather. Oh no! Okay, but the original Final Fantasy VII, maybe. I thought you were gonna say the yeah. original Final Fantasy. I was like, I'm gonna blow my no, brains no, out. No, I'm not. I'm not that. I'm just saying because you're already in that era, mm -hmm. that 32 bit, 64 bit era, and what better JRPG mm -hmm. than, you know, the most famous JRPG? I kind of just want to play Persona Five. Okay. I just want to see what's up. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. If I'm going to go weeby, I'm going full weeby. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get uh, it. Prince Wolfchild. Mustard on a burger is great along with mayo and pickles. All right. You had me. I was I was your mortal enemy up until you said pickles. Listen, everybody likes pickles, especially on hamburgers. If somebody says they don't like pickles, they're a cop. You shouldn't <laughs> trust them. Eric, um, what's the report on that? Um, mayo, no, like, just no, yeah, no, like, mayo. Chipotle mayo is different, but no, and mustard on a burger, it, it, it's a regional thing, and this region doesn't stand for it, absolutely not. Sean Diggs says PS4 has some of the absolute greatest games of all time, y'all both way off on that console. Name one, then, yeah. Holy hell. Uh, well, they were great games, but like when we were looking were at the other consoles, games. we were like, these are like genre changing, you know? Yeah. It's just it was harder to nail down because I feel like we got into like a groove of like, like, like big triple A games got into a groove that was like just boring. Yeah. I think the thing about the PS4 exclusives, like they were good. Some of them I'll go as far as they were great, but most of them were just, you know, really shiny, really pretty looking versions of games you've played already. Right. Like even Horizon, which is a brand new IP, very similar to other games of that elk. So uh Monthly Gamer says, bruh, Mario 64 is leaps and bounds better than Goldeneye. Goldeneye is damn near unplayable nowadays. Well, I played it a couple of weeks ago with four of my buddies, and it was played just fine. I don't know what your problem is. I do think it takes a it takes a decent it takes a few minutes to like retrain your brain to to work yeah. with Goldeneye. Well, like I think once like especially if you played it back in the day, once you're there, right. like you get it. So because because the the horizontal axis on both sticks is flipped, it's on the wrong sticks. Yeah. Like you turn with the right with the C button? No, you strafe with the C buttons. Yeah, yeah, that's what's weird. And you turn with the left stick. That's yeah, not modern. No, no. And it, look, if you're used to dual analog stick movement and fucking, you know, crouching with the the A button and whatnot, 
then this game ain't for you. That's right. You crouch with with right trigger and C down. Yeah. <laughs> you got to hit both of those to crouch. Yeah. You can't jump. There's no jumping. Uh, the reload animation is just that. It's not a full reload animation. Uh, now we're, we can get into the chat and I can say King Snarl, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate it. Uh, we got uh, royalty royalty 13 says, Oh yeah. Check out the most played section under featured in eShop would be great content. Wait, is that my most played or the most played games? I didn't know there was a most played games in the eShop. Uh, Metascension said something about Jeff Gersman. Why did it open the UK eShop? Why does it think I'm in the UK? It does that with YouTube. It thinks I'm in the UK. I don't know. My my VPN set to Washington DC. Is that not? <laughs> did they reclaim us? I, I hope not. They got their own problems over there. I don't want to have to learn how to spell things with a U now. <laughs> Medicine just says, you seemed unfamiliar with Jeff Gersman earlier. He's the dude that was fired from GameSpot in 07 for writing a negative review of a bug-ridden Kane and uh, Lynch, I guess he means game, while the site was decked out in full rap ads for the game. His name's basically been synonymous with integrity in games coverage ever since. Yeah, no, I've... he was fired from GameSpot because he gave Kane and Lynch 1 a bad review. Is that true? And... That's true. That's not just a rumor people say because no, they hate that's, game that's, journalism. That feels like a no. That <laughs> that is a hundred percent true. So he was fired for that. He went and formed Giant Bomb, and then years later, when the owners of GameSpot bought Giant Bomb, Jeff Gerthman said, "Okay, you can buy us under the condition that I go on GameSpot's podcast and tell people why you fired me in the first place." Oh, and he said it was because of that IDOS didn't like. His Kane Lynch review. That's fucked up. So he's been, he's been doing this for like twenty five years. He's a he's a well respected games journalist and games reviewer. He's he's he knows what he's doing. That's why I was saying like he's clearly having an existential crisis because this is right. like very different from the way he used to review games back in the PS two era. Be because when people bring up that stuff, how like uh, like gaming websites are like you know paid by these companies yeah. because they have ads and stuff. I'm always like, that's not a thing because I've seen IGN decked out in Duke Nukem Forever stuff and then the and it, it's got Duke Nukem Forever all around the borders and then a big banner that says Duke Nukem Forever and then right in the middle it says Duke Nukem Forever Review. Five out of ten. <laughs> but I guess IDOS... Oh, uh, the, the, one, the one time. Yeah. <laughs> the one time, yeah. Uh, is there a link to the most played thing? I want to know what that is on the eShop. I, uh, I do want to point out that Eric says, fuck, I don't like pickles. Wow. It's true. Yeah. He is a cop. Um, yeah. Y'all saw my cheer? No. I didn't see in the chat either. Oh, you actually uh, gave me a link. Thank you, royalty. D Mutz says, Bob, don't play a JRPG. Your JRPG ignorance is one of your most endearing qualities. <laughs> I can't, even, dude, I can't even do Pokemon. Like, I, 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 I'm so, like, uh, out of touch that I, I can't even, I don't even have the patience for Pokemon anymore. Yeah. It's so boring. Yeah, I get that. It's, it's just so much grinding that you have to do. It's just, you're That's meshing. me. But you're just mashing A. There's no strategy in the first few hours of the game. You're just mashing. It's yeah. really annoying. Yeah, but you have to and you have to keep doing that over and over mm -hmm. again so you're the right levels for all the gyms. Right. Well but but I mean I mean most of these Pokemon games, you could just beef up one Pokemon and plow our house through everybody. Yeah. But uh uh, s supposedly with this new Pokemon, uh, it's a breeze until you get to the Elite Four. And there's one that has like a huge difficulty spike and then then you have to grind. Uh, the Diamond and Pearl remakes? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, there is an article here about the most played games of uh, 
December, I guess? The Switch eShop just updated uh, with a most played section. It can be found in featured tab of the store. And by scrolling to the bottom, uh, Nintendo has launched a bunch of new hardware. The current list can be found below uh, a bunch of new software. I'm sorry. Uh, Disgaea 6. Okay, that's not the first one. What is this list right now? What do they say? Uh, featured tab games. There's no featured. Is it on the Switch itself? Whatever. This list says the Sky is six, uh, football manager, uh, triple A clock. Oh, you know why it's called that? To be at the top of the directory. A A A. Oh. It's literally just a clock. They'd have the, I think they do the same thing with piano and calculator. Yeah. Um Would you rather have a a clock? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Pokemon, Diamond and Pearl, uh, Garden, Pause, Shumagami Tensei 5, YouTube. All right. This is a bunch of crap. Yeah. It's on the console. Okay. It'd probably make more sense on the console. Gameplay isn't what drives an RPG. That's why if the story isn't compelling, it's not really worth playing. Pokemon. For, for Pokemon, it's supposed to be the cute characters, and it's yeah. just not enough to compel me right now. Like I, I'm just not. It ain't it. They gotta be cuter. They gotta make them cuter now. I'm playing on a home console. I mean, I, I now I'm on the I'm on the team. Uh, let's get, let's get a real triple A Pokemon game going. Like it doesn't have to be, freaking Unreal Engine like beauty like yeah. a, I don't need ray tracing in my Pokemon game I just need a little bit more effort put into it let me see some better animations mm -hmm. we already had a triple A Pokemon Bob it's called Sword and Shield are you trolling me right now <laughs> I liked that game up until I finished the DLC and then I was like was that really good I don't know Just put some guns? Yeah. What's that one with the guns? What was that one called? Pokemon with guns? Oh, I don't one want of the Pokemon had a, had a sniper rifle, didn't he? Uh, Yeah, the, the water type and sword and shield. Yeah. Pokemon my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Arceus looks really cool. I'm interested in that. Um... Monster Sanctuary, Pokemon Metroidvania with skill trees. Is that the no? What's the one that was Pokemon with guns? Are you just thinking of we got Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Shield, and they should have come out with Pokemon Gun? No, no, no. There's there's a fan, not a fan, an indie you know game that was like a. It was like a knockoff of Pokemon, and all of a sudden in the trailer, you just have a gun, and you're shooting people. Jeez, oh, it was crazy. Pal World, that's it. Pal World, that's it. You don't remember that? The trailer was freaking insane. Remember. I do not remember that. Well, you'll you'll have to watch it later. I will watch it later. Um. Anyway, uh, let's watch it now. No, go go Google no. it yourself. <laughs> um. You know what's Pokemon with guns? Digimon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They just freaking taped guns onto some Pokemon and called it a different game. Yeah. Anyway, we're good. Guys. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, I might not stream tomorrow. I got a lot to do. I will definitely try to stream on Thursday. 
uh, my video this week is kind of up in the air because it's a sponsored video and they got to approve it. Um, so hopefully that happens and it'll come out whenever that happens. Uh, somebody in the chat says, did you get your analog pocket? You will find out on Monday. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to say anything else. But Monday at 11 a.m., make sure you have notifications on youtube.com slash wolfden, the main channel. Um, right now, why don't we go say hi to Dan, who is, I think, finishing Resident Evil 7? Ooh. So go He's give him a good a treat. Uh, and hey, if you're here, uh, yeah, listening on, uh, YouTube or on Spotify, slap a like and say hi. And watch you come over to Twitch every once in a while, you know? I stream most days. That's not true. Most nights, you just come, just come over and see what's up. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account and support us for free. Thank you very much. Uh, say hello to Dan and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.